I used to work with illegal immigrants, you guys. This guy from Atlanta was like a 40 year old drunk. I was like 19, 20 at the time, man. I was kind of lost. You know, I was talking to anyone and everyone. I was just bright eyed, ready to take on the world and, 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 and just build connections, relationships with everyone, anyone and everyone, right? I could learn from anyone and everyone. It's better than not having anyone around, which is where I came from. And when I think back out, when I think back on it now, it really is kind of, I mean, I was 20s, like I'm an adult, technically, yeah, like 19, 20, I'm an adult, but like, not really, man. You're not really, you know what I mean? And so like, I think about this, was like 40 something, man, he was coming knocking on my mama's house asking for me and shit, man. He had his own little place and whatnot, you know, and he'd be talking about like having girls over. He kind of put me on a little game and stuff, but he, he I needed a job, man, and he, he put me on to what he was doing, which was doing some landscaping shit, right? So black dude was working with some illegal immigrants um, for this contractor, big fat white dude over in the Texas area. And um, he was like, all right, look, bro, if you want to do this, meet me over here at this little bus stop, 3.30 in the morning, and... We'll get it going from now. I'm like, 3.30 in the morning? What the fuck? Dude, no way. So, uh, I, you know, needed the job. And I'm like, fuck it. What I got to lose, man? I got to, you know, my mama's house. You know, I was sleeping in a room on the floor. She had like a little, so my mom had a, it was like a two-bedroom, two, three-bedroom, like, apartment. Um with a den and this is when I moved from moved from Missouri to Dallas Texas area and so I was living in this little I was uh, on a mattress on the floor in this little den area you know um probably just the area of my desk right here right was as big as the okay so like that corner was what I had to work with right there, right? That dresser, from the dresser to the edge of this bed and where that cat tower at, that was how big my little space was. And I still have girls over. <laughs> Bro. I'm going to be honest with you, dude. Man. And that's why, I like, that's why, bro, I, I don't, I don't like, when people talk and give advice about girls and shit like that, bro, I just, it's just cringy sometimes, man. Some of these, bro, you can tell some of these niggas, some of these motherfuckers ain't lived that life, bro. Or they had a couple opportunities and, like, dude, I was fucking on some girls, bro. There's no business. Like, is, this, is, this is how I know, bro. It's not even about money, bro. Like, money is nice, but if you're getting hoes off of money, bro, you're not doing it right, bro. You're not doing it right. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah, it's cool. You get a different clout, but bro, you're not doing it right, bro. I was fucking girls. Bro, girls was loving your boy. Dude, and I'm in this, and I'm, and, and that's all I have, bro. Like, right, right there, bro, that bed. To the dresser, to the little cat towel. I had a little TV sitting on a dresser. Right? I had a little TV sitting on a dresser. And I had like, it was actually a cool little setup I had going, man. Cool little setup I had going. But. <laughs> Anyways, man. Uh, So, like. So, what happened was 3.30 come, right? We get on a bus. That's like the first bus that that opens up around like when I, where I was at, right? So we get on the bus. We we go to the Plano train station, right? So it was like like an hour hour ride or some shit, bro. Hour ride. We had to get on the bus. The bus took us to the train station, and then we sat there at the train station in a van that that you see like on TV, bro. Like I'm telling you, like the van where it's like 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 it's like seven seats. Right, seven, eight seats, several rows, bro. Bro, oh, dude, I, ah, damn, that reminds me of another job. I, anyways, 
uh i did so like so like bro it was it was like hispanics man like you seen like the fucking like tiktoks and the videos and shit like that bro like it was like just seats and it was just a bunch of like hispanic dudes with the rags on with the hat on you know they got the boots they got the belly you know what i'm saying it's, it's just a bunch of them just sitting you know and I, I get in there and i'm sitting back and we ride for like an hour or two bro drive to this bro i don't even know where the fuck we drove to bro and i think about this this shit was dangerous as fuck dude i've been in bro i, I can't believe it anyways it was two hour, like an hour or two drive to get to this area, man. And so we get to this big ass, we go to this like rural ass area, right? And um, it's like a big ass garage with a whole bunch of tools. You got your, you got your shovels, you got your power tools, you got like some little excavator type deals, man. And it's just a bunch of people running back and forth, one little like cabin in the middle, right? So we going up a little ramp into this big ass like barn. And um, there's like the little the office, a little white office, like in the middle. And so we go to the dude. There's there's like a guy, like a guy or two there. That's like giving all the teams because it's, it's teams, it's teams of people, teams of four. And all the like the, the leaders are going over there to like the to the to the people to give them the contracts. Like, hey, okay, so you're going to a uh, gallery of mall. Hey, you're going to uh the, this doctor's dentist office or some shit. You're going to these. You're going to this other mall over here, or you're going to the graveyard to go do. Like, we did all sorts of fucking shit, bro. Contracted for all these companies, man. I went to a graveyard. I, I like, bro. I went to a graveyard place and we did some uh some fucking like uh, what what the hell did we do? We, we like, I can't even remember, bro. Like, we were trimming branches or some shit. I don't know what, bro. We were, we were doing crazy stuff, man. Um, I was like planting potato plants in the front of the fucking like. So like, you see that you know the plants when you go into like a, a restaurant or like a store or some shit. You see like the plants at the front. I had to install them, bitches. Them things get installed, bro. So we would have to go in and you know uh dig out the the soil right turn it up or if there was already plants there that are dead we dig them out put them in big ass trash bags bro um and then we we would plant the bushes potato plants little purple plants you just we just put them in the ground you know uh cover back over with mud uh we had water we had our have our little breaks every now and then we had the water on the back of the truck you know we had to go fill those up too um you know i had a little friend uh we'll just call him dub his name was dub hispanic dude man he was cool it was cool man he was cool he was a cool dude bro he was about my age we were about the same age man i wonder how he's doing right now man and you could tell he came from a messed up household but he was so funny man he was a he was a good guy you know it's like people that come from like so it was working with him it turns out right so let me tell you the team it was like team kakashi bro it was four of us the leader, um, I can't remember this one dude. He 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 had he had missed teeth. He was missing some teeth. White dude, skinny. He used to do meth. You know, he was a he was a previous meth addict. No longer reformed. He was reformed, and um, he was cool. And then uh, uh the homie J, uh, J Dub, we call him J Dub. He also eventually told me that, you know, we got to talk and he was so cool, man. Cool as fuck, bro. Like, like, I hope he's doing well, bro. He ended up telling me he used to sell guns. Um, <laughs> bro, it just sounds so funny actually talking about this, like actually talking about it, man. This dude, he he told me he sold guns and he was he was a he was a drug dealer and like a gun smuggler for a while and then he got caught up and so he stopped doing it. He also used to do a lot of fucking drugs as well. I can't believe so many like people actually do like heroin and and, and meth and shit, but like that's just like you hear about it and most average to the average motherfucking ninety nine percent of people, it's like what the fuck? Oh hell no! When I do that shit, but there's actually. I've run into a, quite a few people who have like done that shit. I'm like, what? It's 2024, like, or well, at the time it was like what 2010, 15. I'm like, even still, bro. Like at that time, bro, it's like, dude, crack is whack. Like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Why are you anyways? And we, the the fourth person was his 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 uncle, man, his uncle, right? He didn't speak any English, so he had to translate for him. Ended up talking to man uh, J Dub and he ended up telling me like, 
his uncle, he got his uncle at this job, right? And so, so first of all, let me tell you, we got paid at the end of the day. We did our contract thing, and um, you know, we got back home or got back to the to the place after we got done doing our things, right? And um, we would get just a flat hundred dollar, a flat ass hundred dollar bill at the end of the day. We worked for like six, eight hours, so if it it didn't feel too bad, but you know, um. He just gave us all straight hunted. And um J Dub was telling me his uncle was working at like a corn factory where they were only paying him like two, three dollars an hour. And so he got his uncle on at this job that's paying him so much better, man. And he was telling me how like he was really taking advantage of like illegal immigrants, man. And this shit really goes on, bro. Like he was telling me this shit. I'm like, oh my God, dude. Like they're dealing with a like Hispanic some Hispanic people are really dealing with a different kind of fucking struggle, bro. They're really like some people like for real, bro. For real, for real. Some people in general. Like actually, this apartment complex that I'm at right now, let me tell you something, bro. There's a lot of refugees. Like it, you see what I'm saying? I don't even know if they are refugees, bro. Like, but there's a lot of Middle Eastern people here with the hijabs and, and like they're Muslim. Um, and like where I'm at right now, a lot of them and the, and the kids too, and some of them from Afghanistan. The reason why I know that is because I was going up the street, and these kids, bro, twelve year old kids, was carrying a flag with the symbol on it. I did um, content moderation for Facebook and Instagram, so I know what like terrorist organization logos look like. So I knew it wasn't it wasn't like something some terroristic, but it's just something I've never seen before. So I asked him, and I looked at him, all, and I was like, pointing at the flag. He said, "Oh, you like you like brother?" I was like, "Yeah, man. What's what's the what's that country? What what's, what country is that?" He said, "Afghanistan." I was like. Okay, Afghanistan. I right. shout out Afghanistan. I like that, right? I'm like, that's that's cool. Uh, and, I, and I'm like, man, these kids are different, bro. These kids, these these kids from these other countries, bro. They just got a different fucking like bravado, bro. They like, and, and the world is really getting global, man. Like, we getting different people over here, or at least for me, man. Cause I, I like, I grew up most of my life in like a country ass state, bro. And so it was coming, it's coming, spending my other half of my life damn near in texas has just shown me so much man and like dude they might be escaping some of the shit it's like six eight people in in one of these apartments over here bro and and it's multiple families like that man so it's like you never know what people are going through you never know what people are going through there's a family that live next to me. It's like five or six of them. I got this. Like, I'm, I don't know. Like, they they know me as the guy with the computers type shit, right? Some people, but, or some other, I don't know what the other people know me as, man. But they know I'm here, you know, doing my thing. And, uh. Yeah, man. So I used to work with illegal immigrants in landscaping. I had to end up quitting that shit because I'm like, bro, hell no. There's no way. No way, dude. I'm not. I can't keep doing this shit. There's this is not there's no way to live. I, I can do better than this, man. I can do fucking better than this. I can do better than this, bro. <laughs> wow. Yup. I guess that's this one right here. About 17 minutes. I have to tell y'all another one of my jobs. Damn. That's crazy, bro. I got some crazy stories. Like, to be where I'm at and to have done what I've done, you know, I got to say God is great. But at the same fucking time, man, you got to you gotta learn when to, like, pat yourself on the fucking back, bro. Oh my God, I'd have done, I've, <sighs> anyways, it's time to keep going, man, y'all stay up, man, that was one of the stories, story time when I was working with illegal immigrants, I was working as an illegal immigrant, damn near, for real, for real, and, um, 
Yeah. Let me see y'all next one, man. I'm about to make another video. Another video on uh, one of my jobs, bro. When I was folding boxes for money. Yeah, folding boxes for money.